There's old Bill Dance. Wait, that ain't Bill Dance. That's Kelly Jordan. Kelly swapping models this year. Hey guys, welcome to the Bass Cat channel. I'm just kidding. Look, I know I've done a lot of Bass Cat stuff recently, but I finished the reviews. I picked up my boat and I got to go up to the owner's meeting. This, this today is just nostalgic to me. It was really fun. But just so you know, I got some really good stuff. I'm pretty much done with all my Bass Cat videos. I've got a little bit more footage that I'll scatter over the next month of us driving an arrow really fast and a couple of other things. But this is kind of the culmination of two of the three models they announced. The Bobcat's the other one. I didn't really film much in the Bobcat. It's a little bitty. Uh, it's, it's the Margate replacement boat. Not little bitty, but it's the Margate replacement. Anyway, um, th this was a fun day. Uh, I, I will tell you, by the way, uh, I went to Ray Roberts this past weekend. So there is no fish, eight pound fish weighed in the Spark Big Bass at Ray Roberts, which somebody's gonna win 2,000 bucks for weighing a fish over eight and getting an approved in share lunker. So I went up Saturday morning, spent about four and a half hours, and all I did was deep crank. And I would show you footage of that, but all I did was deep crank. I, I, I basically threw a cloud 15 and a cloud 20 the whole time, that's not true. I threw a 10XD a little bit too on some real deep stuff. And I had a number of what I'm pretty sure sand bass bites, and I had one big one on. And you know, it, was, it wasn't two pounder. It was, I felt her shake her head twice. She was four to however big fish get in Ray Roberts. But I had side scanned her behind a, a shallow tree line and I was throwing that, throwing the cloud 20 over the backside of that tree line and pulling it up and, and fishing it over the trees. And she loaded up in one of the trees and it was a big one. And I, I, I didn't keep the footage because somebody is cursing in the footage when they lose that fish. Uh, but so I don't, I didn't have any fishing footage. Now I'll tell you, by the way, there's also been nobody weigh a big fish on Cedar Creek. And Terry and I are going down there Saturday for the sole purpose of trying to catch a big one. Now there's a tournament the following weekend on Cedar Creek that I can't fish because we're having Hollis's birthday party. But if we get on a group of fish, Terry may fish it. But we're really going down there to try to catch a fish over eight pounds. They're out on the deep stuff now to try to claim that big prize at the end of the year. So. Uh, we're doing, I'm calling it bounty hunting. We're doing a little bit of bounty hunting and uh, then we're going to get down to Rayburn in the next couple of weeks. I'm also going to Ivy too. So, so we're going to get out to Ivy. Sorry, Landon said hi. Uh, we're going to get out to Ivy and uh, take a look around for Bass Champs Championship and get some footage out there too. I'm really looking forward to that. I've never been out there and I know there's giants out there. I'm sure the fishing's tough in the summertime, but we're going to check it out. So, but I think you guys will enjoy this footage. So let's jump right into the, uh, to this neat little boat that Basket put together. And by the way, I'm gonna show y'all exactly how they unveiled it right here. So I got a little more. A guy came across the boat that was one of the early ones. And it was in pretty good shape. Had, had a nice motor on it. It was operable. It was something we could do something with. And we did. And it's a, kind of a retro deal that we fixed up a little bit. Now, we do have a lot of parts for that original one, but it's a lot of work. This one wasn't quite that I same, and they're the same type of work. There's probably this better. So, uh, I guess we ought to let you see. Especially from this distance. So that's how they revealed the boat. Uh, I thought it was cool. Of course, we had no idea. Uh, I mean, nobody had any idea, but uh, it, it's pretty nostalgic. Uh, I'll give you all a really good look here. I, I did a voiceover because they were playing... Uh, a song in the background. If you know anything about YouTube, you can't do that. So uh, I'll give you a little walk around right here for this uh, this pretty cool little boat. All right, guys. So they just rolled this out, and I've got some footage for you. I'm gonna roll through here, but this was the reveal. So you saw the little boat outside. I'll show you that again later. But this is uh, this is a remodel of the first basket. Yep. And Rick has already claimed the first one, so oh, this is Basket's 50th year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this oh, yeah. is a remodel of the very first Basket. They're going to make 50 of them. The deluxe Steven and I are going to take it out. I got a water skip, y'all will pull me. 
It is just, I mean, this is exactly what we fished out of growing up. It is just, it's beautiful too. Oh, wow. I didn't even hear, Andrew just said that it's double cable steering, it's not high. But it is a true homage. It does have HTS9s on it, so that's a little more. You know, you can't put $2,000 worth of it's huge. <laughs> he said they didn't have cup on the back. I love the C deck out front end with Ron and Rick's signatures in it. That is just cool. It is just a cool boat. And they said that the original cats you could have the stripe or the lightning bolt. And they decided to go with the lightning and crack on this one. It's like when you see one, you know. I bet they have it. I bet they've not. They haven't rolled it out anywhere yet. Twelve bucks, uh, forty-five pounds. Two couples. All right. I truly feel like I'm in high school again. So most of my buddies got cars and different things for high school graduation. I got a Monarch tri-hull bass boat with a 50 horse marker, which was big time. I was way popular amongst my guy friends, not so much the girls, but my guy friends liked that I had a bass boat. So this is gonna be really interesting. Keep trying to find that dang hot foot and it just ain't there. Cable steering, not hydraulic. Here we go. test here. I don't know that I can drive it with one hand and film it, but we're going to see how fast you'll run. It's a, I think it's a 115. I remember we'll have it from last night, but here we go. There's no hole shot. It just goes through. Oh, 
47.7 miles an hour. I had forgot in an old V-Haul boat, if you come out of it too fast, it'll throw water forward, throw it back on you. But that's a that's neat that they pulled this boat together. Really is. Really is. It it doesn't even have a hole shot. It just goes. Choo. What's this? I mean, see where I'm trimmed is. There ain't no trim gauge in here, but. I mean, it, it, it doesn't set down in the hole like a bass boat does. It's crazy. So, 1971. This was going fast. It was fun to drive around in. I could see if you had a little, uh, if you lived on Athens or, 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 you know, one of the little lakes in East Texas, uh, or if you're a big crappie fisherman and you're not gonna get out on big water, uh, that's a fun little boat to fish out of. Uh, you know, it's got a 12 volt trolling motor. No telling how much that'll jerk that boat around, but uh, it's not a boat to be on Rayburn and Slate a day to day in, but it was a neat thing. And I think it's really fun that they pulled that together uh, on their 50th anniversary. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but on the front deck is Ron Pierce's and Rick Pierce's signature, which is really cool. So they're going to make 50. I'm sure they'll sell 50 uh, to folks who either own dealerships or own tackle stores and want to put them in the tackle store or just guys, like I said, who are on little lakes that want to fish and sort of have a nostalgic experience. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I promise you that's pretty much it for the Bass Cat stuff for quite a while. Also, when we get back down to Rayburn, I've had a bunch of you guys ask. Todd Driscoll and I are going to try to get together. He couldn't meet with me when we were down in May. He said he was just too busy. But I want to catch up on what they saw those fish they're tracking on Toledo do leading into the spawn, through the spawn, and post-spawn. So he should have all that data for us now. I'm really interested in hearing about that. So we'll get that done. And I haven't talked about it, but Glenn Freeman and I and Albert have tried to get out on Toledo several times and high water and some other things dirty water has messed that up but i'm also going to try to get over and get some time in with freeman and then lastly i'm about to start the 10 the great 10 boat search of 2021 and we're going to do it through the fall i'm not intending to buy a 10 boat so i'm going to be incredibly objective i think i was incredibly objective on the first one but i'm going to do it a little bit different and i'll tell you more about how i'm going to do it going forward because i don't have a good baseline yet so we're going to get the first video of that, I hope, shot in the next week or two. And it's going to be the Crestliner. It's the first boat we're going to look at, which I know a lot of you guys are interested in. So we're going to look at 18 to 19 and a half foot metal boats, 10 boats. And uh, that footage to start, should start rolling in here in the next few weeks. So thanks for tuning in, guys. And uh, we'll have more footage up for you all next week, hopefully of Terry and I catching some biggins on Cedar Creek. Thanks, guys.